Hello, my name is Keith Stanley. I'm the executive director of the Near West Side Partners. And today we are actually not in the Near West Side. We are in uh, Brown Deer High School. Right. And I'm with a very special guest. This is a person that I look, looked up to for many years because she's been one of the best community, community organizers I've known uh, since I started doing the work I've done. And I asked her if she would, and she politely agreed today to be interviewed uh, so we can get some insight about community organizing and how we can improve ourselves, not just in the near west side, but across the city of Milwaukee. Uh, can you introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Kathy Walker, and currently, right now, I'm at Brown Deer High School and also club manager with the Boys and Girls Club. So, Kathy, talk to me. Uh, you have had an extensive career here in the city of Milwaukee. Can you tell me briefly what have you been doing for the past few years? <laughs> few, few years. <laughs> Keeping myself busy, Keith. Um, Let's see, let's go back. Um, I started at Miller Brewing Company as an uh, implementation service manager, mm -hmm. which entailed um, IT going out, setting up servers and things like that. And then I took the buyout from Miller because they downsized back in 19, I want to say, uh, 79. Yeah, 79. Yeah, start downsizing. And I took the buyout. But anyway, I went to SDC, Social Development Commission. Okay, SDC. As a IT manager. Okay. Jackie Shropshire at that time had asked me to come along, okay. come over there to put uh, SDC uh, technology on place. Okay. And that's when I had saw what um, community was about because yes. as IT at Miller, uh -huh. I didn't see it. I traveled eighty percent of the time from Miller Brewing Company to wow. different states setting up market area uh, areas. Wow. So when I came to SDC, I was an IT person, but I was going around to the different entity, meaning like Head Start, uh, social, uh, they had um, a homeless shelter uh, on Mitchell Street. Okay. And they had, um, we, uh, I, I want to call the uh, energy assistance programs. Okay. So I had to support those programs. So these programs you all supported, you supported at SDC, these, many, these various programs. Right, as long as they had technology. Okay. So this is what IT, you know, came to support and assess all their needs. Mm -hmm. And at that time, going to social development shelter that they had, family shelter that they had on Mitchell Street, mm -hmm. I had seen uh, a family from my church in oh, the wow. shelter. Wow. I was really, really shocked. And I So at this SDC Social Development Commission shelter, yeah. you saw one of your family or one of your church, church. members families in the shelter. shelter. Right. Wow. We looked at each other and we I was just shocked. And I had never been in a shelter before and I'd mm -hmm. never seen a fa anybody I know in the shelter. And this when uh, realization, I guess the realization of mm -hmm. the community and what's mm -hmm. going on hit me when I saw that family. Wow. And I wanted to know more about what's going on in the community because of SDC. So let's talk about that. So then how long did you stay at SDC and how did you arrive to community organizing? Okay, stayed at SDC for 10 years okay. until they lost some grants. Okay. And before leaving SDC, I took uh, a position that was called the uh, HP. Uh, HIMS was a homeless shelter management system with mm -hmm. service point in the state. Yes. So then I got around to go around the state and in the community, all the shelters and stuff, and see a lot of stuff. Wow. And so when I left SDC, Renee Booker had um, North Avenue CDC and they had the ambassador program. And just for the, that some of the viewers know, Renee Booker, amazing executive director for the North Avenue CDC. Um, I, I'm not for sure how long he, he was there, but he, him and I got a chance to work uh, via the Main Street program in the city of Milwaukee at his Main Street uh, Milwaukee program in the city. He had hired me as a community organizer and the ambassador program. Mm -hmm. And at that time, the ambassadors, uh, I was working for mostly all the aldermen, and what we did was to get W-2 recipients mm -hmm. in to start getting uh, good habits of getting up, getting ready so they can keep their checks and then also um, get um, uh, work experience so they can get jobs. So if I correct, because we actually have a similar program now, it's a security ambassador program. So the North Avenue Community Development Corporation had uh, security ambassadors mm -hmm. that worked throughout the city, not mm -hmm. just on North Avenue. Right, throughout. And you assisted with them to get some of those soft Supervisor. training skills, right, soft making sure that they were, were to, show, uh, to show up on time at work mm -hmm. and 
will be there and be in uniform. Mm -hmm. And so how long did you do that? I did that for the ambassador supervisor for maybe about three years. Okay. And then I went into uh, being the organizer for Metcalf. So that's what I want to talk about. And so I got an opportunity to meet Kathy working for uh, Alderman Willie Hines at the time mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, from the years of 2010 to 2013. Mm -hmm. And her and I would attend community meetings on a monthly basis during that period. And uh, Kathy, I was amazed at your ability, your ability to work with the residents, understand the residents, um, support the residents and help them articulate the issues that they have within that community. If you can, let's talk about, before we get into that, but let's talk about Metcalf just a little bit. Um, what was going on at Metcalf at the time? Metcalf was considered at that time um, the most dangerous neighborhood to go in. Most dangerous, dangerous neighborhood, neighborhood to go in. It was what was happening? What was going on? Drug dealing, shootings, you name it. The only thing that wasn't around in Metcalf was prostitution. Oh, but wow. but drug drug uh, drug dealing, uh, shootings was yes. all the time, mm. all the time. So uh, there was a very uh, disturbing, shocking incident that I remember about Metcalf Park. Uh, dealt with some young men and an older man. Um, can you talk just a little bit about that? We want to get too negative, but just talk a little bit about that. The, uh, the, the in Metcalf Park. Metcalf Park. My understanding, there was a, a issue with a young, um, with some teenagers going after trying to beat up a guy. Oh yes, 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 mm -hmm. yes, yes. That's all the time. Not mm -hmm. only that, but uh, with that, uh, the teenagers going mm -hmm. after them. But and that's one of the things we target with the youth mm -hmm. out there on the street mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. well because they didn't have jobs and stuff. Exactly. And that was one of the other issues, robbery or mm -hmm, even mm -hmm. attacking the seniors, which we had the uh, Wesley Scott yes, Senior Center there. That's right. And most of the seniors were scared to go to uh, pick and right. save. And we had ambassadors right. walk them to their cars and back so they wouldn't get robbed. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the issues. And that, that uh, the residents were disconnected. Disconnected. So talk about that then. The residents were disconnected. What role did you play who did you work for? What role did you play in Metcalf to help to deal with some of these issues? One of my primary targets was to try to get the residents together because it was split. Because mm -hmm. when they disbanded the resident meeting there uh, just prior to me coming there, mm -hmm. I think there was association at that time. Okay. And it was disbanded. And so wow. it was a split mm -hmm. neighborhood mm -hmm. at that time. So my hardest thing was to figure out how can I get everyone engaged as one. And when you say everyone, my assumption would be that you, when you say everyone, you mean residents who are living in that community. Living in the community. And so what I did, I went out with flyers mm -hmm. to uh, explain about resident meeting and then uh, surveys asking the residents what would they want to see in this meeting. Now I have to, I have to ask you about this. I would imagine a person who's going into community organizing, they're just fresh out of college and they're going to community organizing and if their executive director or their supervisor share with them, go out in the community with flyers and get people to come to a meeting. Is that what it takes to get people to come to a meeting? No, it, it's perseverance, first of all, because a lot of times those flyers stay right on that door and a lot of times uh, uh, people will tell you they're not coming or they just won't open their doors wow. or they're not interested. But the key to being a good organizer, and I'll tell that to anybody, mm -hmm. is perseverance. Mm -hmm. Don't give up. Be consistent. What does that look like in practice? In other words, when you walk inside the office as a community organizer, what does perseverance and consistency look like? In the, I mean, what does that mean? So are you calling people? Are you if, knocking if, on doors? If it's not so much calling. I don't do the calling. Yes. I go and knock on the door. I'm back again. Yes. Can I get just an hour of your time? Wow. You know, you have to go continuously uh, every day, same routine, yes. same routine every day. They mm -hmm. watch you. They're watching you. There's some residents not at work. They're out in that window watching. <laughs> there she is again, <laughs> leaving a flyer, still asking. You know, and I can tell if somebody took a flyer because I come back down that same block and I say, okay, so uh -huh. they took that flyer, so I'm just going to wait the next day and see <laughs> if I can talk to them. No, good question, though, but 
you talk about perseverance and consistency, you know, you dealt with, there were thousands, I don't know how many people there were in Metcalf, but there's a lot of houses and homes to deal with. How, how are you able to continually connect with some of these homes, knowing that you have hundreds to knock on, hundred doors? Well, I had help. I had uh, ambassadors. We would uh, we would um, section off, target different blocks, mm -hmm. and um, every other day we were doing, and we would probably hit about maybe 150 to 200 homes mm -hmm. a day until we got it done. Wow. And then we'll go back again. Oh wow back again to get it, get it done. And then after a while at the resident meetings when, they, when I would have them, uh, and I would have them if it wasn't nothing but two, three, four, five. Mm. And at the same time, then I started looking at the corporation that was in That's right. Metcalf Park and built some relationship with uh, Master Lock. That's good. That's and right. then we that. had Fitzsimmons over there, mm -hmm. uh, the Boys and Girls Club over mm -hmm. there. And, and, I, right. and I got on, built relationship with them as mm -hmm. well and then to get to know some of the businesses mm -hmm. there to get them involved too. So it might be something that the residents might be interested in on these flyers. Then wow. build a good relationship with District 3. The, the, the uh, Milwaukee Peace Department. The Community Liaison. That's right, area. Community Liaison Officer, right. CLOs. Right, right. So let's talk about, let's peel this back just a little bit. You are a community organizer in Metcalf Park, a neighborhood that's very challenged. Who's your parent organization or mother organization? Who, who, who who's help paying? Who's paying your your bills, your salary? Was uh, that the city of Milwaukee? Was it that? was the city of Milwaukee mm -hmm. community block grant. Oh, so the block grant office. The community block grant. That's right. And who did you? Who was receiving the funds from block grant? Was it? It was North Avenue CDC. Wow. So North Avenue CDC was basically the parent organization right. receiving funds from the block grant office, the city of Milwaukee's uh, community development block, block grant office to fund for your position. What, who gave you your mission? Was it the Black Grant Office? Was it North Avenue CDC? Was it the residents? Who said, these are your priorities? This is what you should we'll, we'll focus in on. The priorities, the, the, it came from the residents. Mm -hmm. uh, the Black Grant basically just outlined, it was a template of what you need to do, like your monthly reports and mm -hmm. how many times you need to knock on doors and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. That's just a template. Mm -hmm. But really the real objectives and directives was the residents. Mm -hmm. It is what, how they want to see their neighborhood change mm -hmm. and how can I help them? Mm -hmm. Because I was their eyes and their ears, but I needed you to interject what you need accomplished. So uh, you mentioned something in our, in our pre-interview and I, I want to, this, this three word term, I think you said two, four, with? Two, four, and with. And what, I, what, what is two? for and with me to the community when i say to the community when i do a flyer or as i set up an agenda it's to the community it's not my agenda it's for it's to the community for the community to for with for what we are doing is for each other oh. is we going to clean up a block or mm -hmm. we're going to have a block cleaning we are partners together to do this mm -hmm. this is for us to get this neighborhood in order mm -hmm. With everything that we sit down and say, mm -hmm. we are doing it together with mm -hmm. each other. If you want, you want to see more policemen, you want to see the foot patrol, the bike, well, with, let's, get, let's sit down and let's have this conversation. Okay, let's bring them mm -hmm. in. So everything we do, we are doing it together. It's not my agenda that I'm pushing down. Mm -hmm. This is your community. How do you want this shape? Mm -hmm. And I'm just your eyes, your ears, your uh, legs to get it going. So I'm just Two. a... For with. with. So let's talk about a few things before we wrap this up. What do you think makes a good community organizer? You mentioned perseverance and you mentioned consistency. Would you add anything else to that? Listen, list? listen. Mm -hmm. You have to be a darn good listener, not interject, even if it's negative coming out. You need to some way look at the negative that's coming out and see how we can generate this into a positive but you have to be a willing listener. Listen. Mm -hmm. Anything else you would add to that? That's all. Perseverance. 